here we come to economic analysis in the real form, the real classic sense. Now, let me stress, this is not money. It's not money. It's people. This is your productive workforce that you're going to see here. That's what these bar graphs represent. Here is, to begin with, your entire national population. They're represented by this bar graph. We have to then distinguish that in general terms, I think it's still accurate, that people between 18 and 21 are probably not yet in the labor force. Right? They should be going to college, according to our plan. Right? Even 22, you should still be in college if you can be there. And generally speaking, over 65, there's a tendency of people to retire, which I think is a mistake, right? Retirement is for wimps. That's a good, that's a ticket to an early grave. Don't do it. Don't plan it. Retirement is for wimps. But of course, for me, there are people who do heavy physical labor who it's an absolute necessity. Right? Yeah. So if you, if you haven't had that, though, you ought to think about it. How are you going to survive? Now, here's what we've done is then we've broken this out. We've taken this part of the population, these people, and we're now displaying them in this bar graph. And the idea with this is, what are they doing? How have you assigned? How are you using your labor force of people? Not money, but people, because this is real economics. Now, any society will have to, first of all, pay its wage bill in the broadest sense. Everything that goes into your standard of living, your market basket of consumption, food, medicine, the things you have to uh, buy, right? everything that you consume, this is V is for variable capital. These letters are traditional and they come from any number of uh, 19th century economists, from Ricardo to Marx and all kinds of people in between. Variable capital is the wage bill, the market basket, and it's in the broadest sense, right? Everything, your clothing, your housing, all the things that, uh, that the workforce requires, okay? Wages. Constant capital is maintenance, to maintain and restore all of your hard infrastructure, your railroads, your factories, your machines, your cars, uh, all kinds of industrial equipment has to be kept ready to continue the production process. So maintenance of what exists the existing uh, productive stock, your machine tools, your, your, uh, um, you know, the, the, the various uh, components of your factories, your assembly lines, and so forth. Maintaining all of that. So here you're maintaining your labor force. You cannot underpay the V because then you're going to be damaging the viability of your labor force, and you can't avoid paying for the C. When the, this, uh, the question, Greg about the, uh, the railroads, right? If you have a railroad and you don't pay the maintenance, you're asset stripping the railroad. And if you underpay C, it's like asset stripping a railroad. You get cash out of it, but uh, it's going to be bad. And again, this is the people that you've assigned to do that. Now, out of wages and maintaining your plant and equipment and your infrastructure and everything else, you're going to generate a surplus. The secret of industrial capitalism is that it does generate a real surplus. Real. Not only through robbery. Not only through robbing Indians or pre-existing, pre-capitalist economic formations. But by production, the whole secret, if, if it hadn't been so, we would not be here. Industrial capitalism, if it's properly managed, will create a real surplus and the society can go on with that. You're not simply limited to robbing people, as Howard Zinn would say. He said, the profits of American industry are all robbery. No. Some yes, some yes, but the profits of Wall Street are very largely robbery. But in industry, this is not so. So what you're going to have then is 
a surplus, which is the, the two forms of S. Now, this S, the lower part of the surplus, is what we can call overhead. And it simply means the expenses of a given social system with its inequities and its injustices built in. In other words, if you have a lousy income distribution, you need a police force. They're going to be up here. You're always going to need an army, most likely. So your military, your police, your government bureaucracy, your corporate bureaucracy. But then other people who are the, the, the consequences of, in this case, finance capital rule, the unemployed. People are unemployed and underemployed. They're going to have to be in this uh, area because they are a cost, right? They're part of the overhead, part of the expense of keeping the system uh, going. So there's a lot of consumption there, right? Government employees, party officials, hangers-on, patronage bosses, all this stuff, right? Those people are up here, and they don't really produce anything, but they're kept busy here. Now, if you're lucky, you are then left with S prime. And S prime is your absolute surplus. This is the surplus which can be reinvested for the following year. And S prime comes into existence as what? New productive labor that can be hired and put to work, and new factories, and also new infrastructure. Right, because you've got to regard that transportation is a physical change in the order of nature. In other words, when you move commodities from here to there, it's a physical change in the order of nature. And if that's what you need, you've got to have that. So this comes into existence as new factories and new productive workers. And eventually, they're going to go down here. Right? They're going to be added to, uh, to what these people are, uh, are busy doing. The basic measure of health of an economy is bearing in mind once again that these are parts of your labor force. These are people who have been put to work or otherwise assigned to these categories. Oop, this has to be plus. I'm sorry, it's not equal. That's a very serious problem. C plus V. S prime over C plus V. What you're aiming at is that the value of this expression should increase that the part of your labor force that you're able to devote to the absolute surplus is growing compared to the combined parts that you're devoting to your variable capital, your wage bill, and your plant and equipment and infrastructure maintenance group, right? keeping that going. And of course, you want to define this very largely, but really this extends to the biosphere. You can call this biosphere maintenance. Right? Keep it all going, and here is your labor force maintenance. You want S prime over C plus V, so sorry, plus V, to be rising at an increasing rate. So you want this to be rising, and you want it to be increasing. So the second derivative is positive. So according to the law of value, doesn't inserting marijuana into the economy decrease the value? It does. It decreases the value of the workforce? Yeah, it does. We constantly hear the narrative... We've got to insert marijuana right. to, to make right. the economy better. And I, you're saying right. it decreases, I'm just saying it decreases the value of the workforce. Yeah. It does. It destroys your labor force. In other words, there are, again, these are people. Once again, these are people, not money, not commodities. But by adding, by making marijuana or heroin or other poisons, really, available to workers, you're destroying your labor force, right? It's, they typically turn to that when they're unemployed. The devil's advocate would say you'd reduce the prison population, which is overhead. It's overhead, uh, yeah, yeah. It's all here. It's consequence of finance capital rule. But so you want to you want no, to kill no, people? No, but you don't want to send people to prison. <laughs> <laughs> the de the decriminalization versus like legalization idea. It's yeah. just it's it's toxic, and and above all, um, the mental. Capital, right? In other words, we, the, the big argument here is you've got to invest in a productive labor force. You've got to invest in health and education for your labor force. Marijuana, I'm sorry, it does um, 
it causes cognitive impairment. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, it does. <laughs> Uh, and some people like it, some don't, but it causes cognitive impairment. Well, Watch out. We're not out. advocating sending people to prison. No, nor, nor exterminating anybody, please. We're not exterminating any. What are we going to call the output of this equation? Like, what, what, is, what is the... This is the... Uh, the idea is that th- these people are producing, and um, this, by this, the model we have here, this is a productive economy. Okay. So this is producing something because it has an absolute surplus. Right? So this is a fairly healthy economy. Right? This might have been the U.S. 40 years ago or so. Right? With, the, with the goal being that you want to invest more and more like, in next year's production that you're spending. Like yes. In other words, the, the more focus on V is the sort of, it's the immediate, you, some people might say hand to mouth. In other words, what you want to do is to be able you want to be able to have a rising standard of living. And this does not measure standard of living. It measures people in the workforce assigned to different tasks. If it's, uh, if V, if, for example, if you say the U.S. economy depends to 70% on consumer spending, that's bad. That's too much. And it doesn't mean that we want to lower anybody's standard of living. Quite the opposite. We want to raise the standard of living, but we want to have more emphasis on capital goods. Germany, Japan, healthier. Living standard is comparable, a little bit lower above even, but they have capital goods that are still going, whereas our capital goods are kaput. We don't have capital goods. We've got to reacquire that. And you can't have a recovery, as we saw with the Pelosi uh, stimulus, right? If you have a Keynesian uh, consumer-led recovery attempt, it will fail. As long as the federal government was providing the stimulus, it did some good. Certainly, it did a lot of good. But once this, that stimulus is, is removed, there's nothing self-sustaining about this. Whereas, if you do the infrastructure approach that we're arguing for, right, the five trillion to begin with and then more, because it will catch on, then you can say, this will get the capital goods industries going, steel, railroads, locomotives, generators, for, you know, nuclear plants, whatever, cable, all the things, right? I mean, uh, long-distance uh, electrical uh, power lines, things like this, right? Once you get your capital goods industries going, then if you have a, you know, some source of demand that goes on, that leads to then a, a, a recovery that becomes more and more self-sustaining. Now... Suppose we have a left uh, liberal. Let's see if we have a left liberal mushhead. Okay. <laughs> a left liberal mushhead might say, wait a minute, this is rotten. That's capitalist profit. Yes, it's a real absolute profit. In other words, it's what the society has produced. Now, the capitalists, she's there. the capitalists are going to steal it. And how about this? I don't want to have all this stuff for machines, right? I want to put people first. Okay. Let's put people first. Let's have, here's your economic model. <laughs> Only V. What is that? The wage. Huh? Wages. But what, what kind of economy is described here? Huh? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How, an economy where everybody only works for immediate consumption. Services. Services, yeah. Hunter gathering. There. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's hunting and gathering. That's alley Day to day. There's no there's no capital investment. There's no maintenance of capital investment. There's no surplus. There's no state. Right? There's no S. There's no it's sometimes called capitalist consumption. There's no surplus S prime. There's no cost of overhead S. There's no capital goods. There's no main. There's only V, and the um, the example of this would be um, the classic one in these courses has been the so-called strand lopers, a, uh, a culture on the coast of uh, Africa. You go running along. You come to a dead body of an animal. Eat it. Oh, fall asleep, and then rush on to find the next one. <laughs> then though it's hunting and gathering, nuts, berries carcasses, hunting if you can, but you don't have any, you have zero capital good. You don't have an axe, you don't, maybe you have a rock, I don't know. Uh, but this, and this would be the paradise of the left of the mushheads. They would say, yes, let's, 
Let's put everything to work for people. Let's put people first. Uh, not so good, because at this rate, you know what the average life expectancy here would be? 25? None of us would be here. Right? We'd all be gone if it were only V. So th- you know what I'm trying to say with this is, this seems to say we want to raise the standard of living, but actually you've destroyed the standard of living. Right? You have no standard of living. It's not even living. Now, let me see what I can find here. Here. How about this one? Here's the United States today. There's no S prime. No real surplus is being created. There is overhead. Oh boy, is there overhead. This is retail sales, financial services, a prison population, an army, police force, um, finance, you know, we've got um, <laughs> lawyers. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, look, you have to distinguish, no, no, let's try to, let's say something nice about the lawyers. Is that a certain level of this legal activity can be described as socially necessary or maybe neutral. I don't know. Um, and you, you, in other words, the, the point is that it's excessive. Because remember, the secret of the overhead is that they're not directly productive. They can be socially necessary, but only as a function of the productive labor force. So doctors and nurses are absolutely socially necessary, but you've got to try to relate them to the number of of, uh, productive workers that you have, because that's their job, is to maintain the the productive uh, labor force. And of course, then becomes, by extension, everybody else. So look... uh, the C is being under-serviced, right? These, again, these are people. As we said, the, the, the uh, capital stock of the United States is being looted by asset strippers. So the C is way too low in terms of the workers assigned to do that. Right? We used to have firemen and brakemen. We don't have that anymore. We got, we got nothing. And the V, this is also being underserved. These people... It's certainly true that farmers can now feed far more people, right? It used to be 95, 90% of the U.S. was farmers. Now it's, what, 2%, 3%? It's probably too low. That's probably a little bit too low. But the rest of it is this overhead. Walmart, retail sales, financial services, Wall Street, and so forth. Prisoners, police, army, the underemployed, the unemployed. This is a society in big trouble. And this and with this the, the standard of living goes down. No, I just I just commented the press. So All right, now here would be progress. Go ahead. No, so I mean China's would be C would be like our China's might right look now. more like this. This would be progress for anybody. Now again you're going to have a big absolute surplus. Every year, you're developing new plant and equipment and new productive labor, and you're putting them to work. You're realizing the surplus. You do have overhead. You want to have plenty of doctors, nurses, and so forth in relation to your productive labor. And But here now, this is no longer that you're underpaying these expenses, that the productivity of labor is now so high that you can feed everybody with far fewer farmers, and you can do all your maintenance because you've automated it, and you can get that done. And the, the proof of the health is, what is your real surplus? See, that somehow, if you want to, it's like a balance sheet. How do you read a balance sheet? How do you read this? You look at the absolute surplus up here of plant and equipment being produced by them and real productive labor that's coming out of them. And maybe that's something like China. Now think about this stuff. And remember, once again, you're not dealing with money aggregates. You're not dealing with stocks. You're not dealing with the subjective side in any way. This is the objective side. Those are people. And your goal, therefore, is, again, S prime over C plus V, expanding and expanding at a, an increasing rate. And that is uh, one way to measure an economy. 
And when you're thinking about this, Rosa Luxemburg was a uh, communist, certainly. She was one of the founders of the German Communist Party. Uh, and she talked about uh, the total capitalist. In other words, what you're doing is you're taking an entire national economy and treating it as one integrated agro-industrial firm. So it's production, factories, and uh, farming all together. Unfortunately, the financial services and retail sales boys have gotten in there, but uh, you're dealing with a, a total analysis, at the very least, of a whole country. And better yet, the world economy, right? We should have a world expression for this. What are people doing around the world, right? And that is, there are too many peasants in very inefficient uh, operations. There's a lot of maintenance that could be automated because you want to get you want to get the surplus up here. You want this to be growing faster than the combined V and C. Okay. Now. Yeah.